When working together, a father and son are capable of mighty things. They could be starting a business. They could be building a home or growing crops. At the end of the day, there is nothing more binding between a father and son than the knowledge that they've accomplished a goal for which they set out. This video is very special to us all, as it highlights the bond between a father and son and their shared passion for bringing the forgotten and forlorn cars of this world back from the brink and giving them new life, exposing the diamond in the rough as it were, and proving that there is life and memory in every one of those cars that have been tossed on the scrap heap of history. To Dalton and JD, we say thank you so much for allowing us to create this custom for you. Hello folks, thanks again for joining us. This week we're doing a very special car for a very special kid, JD. There's no campy warning about violence to die cast cars this week. If you don't know by now, you need to go watch some prior videos. As a matter of fact, why don't you go watch all of them and then subscribe. Now that the shameless self-promotion is done, let's get started. As many of you have probably already noticed, this is not a 1959. This is the closest model that we could find, a 1957. The two biggest and most glaring issues in our opinion is that the headlights and reverse lights are different. While we won't be able to do much about the reverse lights, the headlights are a relatively easy fix, as you'll see later. That said, let's get started on the disassembly. I normally use Mattel bodies for my mods, but the closest Fairlane print that I could find of theirs was a 66. This is an M2, and I have to say that their attention to detail is striking. The hood and glass will have to come out the hard way. Once they're drilled out, I'll get the grill and bumpers off as well, then get the metal pieces into the stripper. Just in case you're wondering, this is what I mean when I say the goo. I'll give the Fairlane a good rinsing, then polish it up and prep it for primer. As you can see, I'm struggling with replacing the hood so that I can prime the whole car. I only remembered that I had to do something about the headlights after I sprayed the primer. Since I can't change the shape of the fenders, I decided to go with smaller headlights. At this scale, the smaller headlights will actually be a hair smaller than they should be, but visually, it'll be a negligible difference. A little experimentation helped out a lot with this build, especially here when I cut out the original headlights. They say that patience is a virtue, it's just not one of mine. Here, I do a little final grinding before I test fit the replacement headlights. In this section right here, I actually had the audio from one piece at a time by Johnny Cash. 
apparently Columbia Records did not like that, so it got struck. This particular car is called a two-door post. That means that it has a full frame around the side windows, creating a B-pillar. I'm creating said B-pillars out of some roll cages that Johnny and I picked up at our local flea market. Once they're in place, I'll hit the whole body with one more coat of primer, then pass it off to Foggy for some of that beautiful blue tractor paint. She's much handier with a paintbrush than I am, and using a rattle can like I normally do would have been a nightmare. On a side note, this is the same tractor paint that Dalton and JD used on the real car. She'll lay the blue down in three even layers, and then pass it back off to me for decals and clear coat. I tried to wrap my head around how to make the dog dish hubcaps for a couple of hours, but in the end I finally just decided to drill out the hubcaps themselves, put on some white walls. These particular white walls weren't quite thick enough, so I fixed that problem later on with a paint pen. I'll give it a test fit, make sure that everything fits together well, and then pass it back off to Foggy for some chrome trim. I know that this isn't the exact shade of blue for the interior, but it is a 164 scale model, so we want things to pop. Even though you won't be able to see one of the major decals, it'll still add an air of authenticity. That's right, we printed 164 scale playing cards. You wouldn't believe how difficult that was. Building both the real car and the die cast, well, they're family affairs. This is a segment of audio that I thought I'd leave raw for you guys so that you could see how well Foggy and I actually work together. Possibly. Well, you said you were hanging out until I was done. I asked if you wanted me to. You have to make a choice, babe. Do you want me to hang out? No. Go ahead. Oh my god. You know, half the reason that I act like I do is because you act like that. You make it easy to be annoying. Why would you want to be annoying? Because it's fun. And it's not like you, you know, make the effort to stop me. What am I supposed to do? You're so cute. I love you so much. Oh my God. I can love you even though you're annoying. I don't love it when you're annoying. (sighs) You know I'm going to leave that in. I'm leaving the audio from that just for you. That'll just show how annoying you are. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Oh, bugger. What? Pushed a little too hard. Uh Well, since we're leaving the audio in. See this right here, folks? This is what happens when you give it a little too much gusto. I'm going to have to fix that.
So we'll leave that and uh, stick this right here. Since I can't show you the ceiling with the body on the car, this is what it looked like before we trimmed it. We finally put everything together off screen, so how about some glamour shots? This is by far our most difficult build to date, but we wouldn't have traded the experience for anything in the world. For Victor Mackey, Johnny B, our families, everyone stay safe out there, take care of each other. Tune in next week as we're doing Dalton's most hated car.